I'm late. I'm just around the corner. We've probably all used predictive text whilst messaging, but have you ever played around with what happens when, after typing in two words, you then just keep on picking the first text suggestion? Chat GPT will not sure why we have to wait to have a problem at the moment, but I think we need AI. So obviously that isn't a brilliant sentence, but it shows how just a relatively simple predictive text algorithm can generate vaguely plausible sentences just by suggesting one more word at a time. And in basic terms, ChatGPT and all large language models are just more sophisticated versions of that. And I asked ChatGPT what it thought of this idea, and it said, in some ways, yes, ChatGPT can be thought of as a more sophisticated version of predictive text. And then it went on. In this video, I want to give you a sense of the four crucial ways that ChatGPT is more sophisticated than predictive text, and thereby give you not only a rough idea of how it works, but also a basic insight into where the limits of this kind of approach to AI could be. So to be clear, this isn't a techie video for devs who want to dive under the hood. There are plenty of those elsewhere. This video is for anyone who wants to develop their high-level intuitions about how ChatGPT works. But first, let's go back to predictive text and talk about how that works. Languages have regularities that any speaker of that language just intuitively knows. The simplest example is which word or words are most likely to follow others. For example, in English, the word remote would typically be followed by control remote control. And basically, predictive text algorithms work by analysing a large amount of text and simply counting up which words typically follow others. However, they might only look at the statistics for, say, word triplets. Given word 1 and word 2, what is the most likely word 3? When you then type in word 1, followed by word 2, they give you a prediction of the, say, three most likely next words. But this obviously means that while most English speakers will know how to end the four-word phrase, cats have nine lives, a triplet-based prediction text model would likely fail at this. So predictive text algorithms showed us that by using very simple statistics about a language, you could usefully predict which word is likely to come next it soon fails and it doesn't generate great sentences. ChatGPT and other large language models have taken this basic insight to extraordinary new heights by scaling up three key aspects of how they work. Firstly, instead of just taking in two words as their prompt, they can take in over a thousand words or more as the input to their algorithm. Secondly, they capture their statistics from vast amounts of text examples, hundreds of billions of words in the case of ChatGPT. Thirdly, and most importantly, instead of just adding up simple statistics about word frequencies, these large language models capture the statistics into a special kind of very large neural network called a transformer network that uses a kind of attention architecture to work out by itself which parts of the previous text it should be paying more attention to in order to generate the next words. So unlike the earlier predictive text algorithm, it's not trying to exactly match the input prompt. This architecture was first introduced in a now famous paper published just in 2017 called Attention is All You Need. So in very simple terms, those are the three main ways in which the core algorithm has been massively improved way beyond what predictive text was doing, while still having the basic setup of a large number of text examples, analysed by an algorithm to develop statistics about a language, 
that can then be used to predict what should be the next word given an initial prompt. The large language models also keep on iteratively generating new words until they reach a special stop token. And so this is how ChatGPT generates whole sentences rather than individual words. The fourth significant improvement of ChatGPT to earlier versions of itself, like GPT-3, is the way that the underlying GPT algorithm has then been wrapped into an easy-to-use chatbot web interface and given some sophisticated safety and quality guardrails. And altogether, this is what makes up ChatGPT, the algorithm that exploded into the public consciousness at the end of 2022. And what's extraordinary is that basically a super advanced version of predictive text can generate behaviors that at times are convincingly intelligent. Some people predicted this, but many others, myself included, thought that it would take much more to achieve what ChatGPT can do now. It often answers questions in a way that is as if it understood what you were asking for, and as if it understands the subject matter at hand. And all of this just from learning some deep statistical relationships between words that it found within a huge volume of static training text. But what can this high-level view of how ChatGPT works tell us about the possible limitations of this approach to creating an artificial intelligence? Well, the first thing to note is that this is not the way that we learn language. I've seen estimates and studies on infants learning language that can be extrapolated to suggest that humans may be encountering the order of hundreds of millions of words as we become educated young adults. ChatGPT used hundreds of billions of words, three orders of magnitude more. Also, there is no agent here. Between the submission of prompts, ChatGPT isn't thinking about anything. It's not reflecting on what was just said or pondering what to do next. The text generation algorithm only runs when you submit a new prompt. So the good news is that ChatGPT cannot be devising plans for how to take over the world in its spare CPU cycles. And even the sense that you're having a back and forth conversation is an illusion orchestrated by the ChatGPT interface that sits over the underlying language model. This is because ChatGPT is simply using the previous to and fro text of the chat as part of an ever-growing prompt to the text generation algorithm. So ChatGPT has no separate memory. It isn't packaging up concepts from a conversation as little nuggets to refer to later. And because of this, there is a risk that if the conversation goes on too long, ChatGPT will simply start forgetting what was said at the start of the conversation, as the length of text in the conversation history gets longer than the underlying prompt size can handle. This can obviously be fixed to some degree by simply growing the size of the prompt that can be used. But not only is this resource intensive, it's also not at all how we engage in longer, ongoing conversations. And the summation of all of these points is that ChatGPT is not building up a consistent conceptual world model that it can add to as we talk with it, and that it can then use to perform logical, calculative inferences as it contributes to the conversation. It really is just saying things based on the statistical properties it's uncovered in huge volumes of text and the growing conversational prompt. It therefore often makes mistakes that reveal its lack of any in-depth understanding of what it's seemingly talking about. And it's usually not very good at doing rational, calculative tasks that it hasn't seen others do in its training set. And of course, OpenAI and many other organizations are looking for ways to further improve these AIs to overcome these limitations. But the description I've given here captures the core approach of the current large language models. And to be clear, the competence of these models is often impressive and raises interesting questions like, what do we mean by saying that something understands the language it's using? 
And in what ways does their behaviour relate to our human cognition? And how will this change our societies and our political economies? But I'll explore these kinds of questions and more in future videos, which should be on the screen here as soon as I publish them. For now, I hope it's been useful to develop this analogy between predictive text and ChatGPT. These large language models are amazing at what they can do, but it doesn't seem that attention is all you need. Thank you for watching.